Hello everyone. Today, I want to take some time to very briefly make a lesson about cost of production. I promise it will be very quick. You still have to read the assigned chapters and go through the resources in the module to get a good grasp of this topic. But let me highlight some things very quickly. We are in the section of the course dealing specifically with businesses. It's called the theory of the firm. What I mean is we want to get an understanding of cost. We want to get an understanding of profits. We want to understand competition. We want to know what an economist has to say about pricing, about profits, about who your competitors are, and about what is good for the consumer, i.e. efficiency. So we have a lot on our plate for this section of the course. So let's start small. Let's start looking at cost of production. Now, firstly, when it comes to understanding a business, we look at time periods. And there are two main time periods in this section of the course. We have what's known as the short run and we have the long run. Here's how I look at it. The short run is that time period when a business just opened. So what that means is at least one of your resources, one of your inputs into the production process is fixed. You can't get any bigger. And more often than not, the resource that you can't expand because you just started the business is your capital, your plant size, okay? You just open a business. Can you immediately have a lot of factory space? Can you immediately expand capital? In the short run, this resource is fixed. Now, here's the other time period, the long run. And in the long run, you have been open for a while. You've been around for a while, which means if you want to expand, you can. You no longer have this fixed resource. Now, put on your business hats. Money you make when you just open a business is going to be very different from when you've been around for a while. How you interact with competition in the short run is very different than how you interact with competition in the long run. Your prices might be different. Your costs might be different. Which means when we're examining these business outcomes, we have to identify, is the firm in the short run or the long run? So you'll hear a lot about this. Here's another concept I want you to get. What do we mean when we say cost in this course? Now, you might have a lay definition of cost, but you are in an econ class. So, I need you to understand what we mean by economic cost. Here's how I'll do it. We break down cost in two parts, two types. When we want to pay for the inputs in the production process, these are cost of production. Now, the first type is what's called explicit costs. Explicit costs. Now, these are costs you are very used to. It's the normal everyday cost of running a business. Think. Think. What are some costs of running a business? Normal everyday costs. You might have to pay rent. You will have to pay your workers. You will have to pay for materials. You might have a light bill. 
a water bill, insurance. Explicit costs are those everyday costs of running a business. I think of it this way. Explicit costs are those costs that I have to pay an outsider for some input into my production process. I got to pay a worker. I have to pay DWP. I have to pay Allstate. I got to buy my materials from my producer. The point is, explicit costs are those monetary outlays that we pay to an outsider to run the business. Now, here's one that's very tricky. You've probably never heard of this before, so listen. There is another type of cost that we need to take into consideration in economics. These are called implicit costs. Now, what are these? Implicit costs are very specific. These costs are the opportunity cost of using self-owned resources. Here is how I think of implicit costs. I say, what are the things that I had to give up in order to run this business? What are the things that I had to walk away from? These are opportunity costs of opening my business. So I decide to open my business and I gave up some things. I walked away from some things. This is what's known as implicit costs. These self-owned resources that I'm not necessarily compensated for, but they are actually costs of doing business. I'll give you an example. Let's say I have a store. I own the property. And I decided to open a cell phone store. Now, I own this storefront. It belongs to me. But when I decide to start selling cell phones, I decided I am going to use this storefront, it's mine, as my place of business. Now, you might be saying, that's awesome. You don't pay any rent. But an economist will say, you could have gotten rent for it. You gave up that rent when you decided to use the resource for yourself. This is an implicit cost of running that cell phone store. Here's another common example. How many of you have ever ran your own business? I don't care what it is. It could be a lemonade stand. You could be selling some stuff on Instagram. But you decided to run your own business. Don't you spend a lot of time and energy getting things ready? Aren't you up at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., making sure every, everything looks great on your website? You're putting in so many hours. Do you pay yourself overtime? If it's your firm, the answer to that is probably no, I don't. But didn't you use a resource? A resource that you owned? An economist will say that is a cost of doing business. It's an implicit cost. So let's recap. Explicit cost, what you pay an outsider. Normal everyday cost of running a business. Implicit cost are those opportunity costs of using self-owned resources. When I'm looking for implicit costs, I look for that opportunity cost piece. I say, what was given up? What's foregone? What did I walk away from in order to run the business? Those are implicit. Now, since we have an understanding of explicit and implicit, here is where you need to take note. How do you calculate profits? What type of profit are you looking for? Because accounting profit, 
will just say, take the revenue, which is how much you earn from selling the good, and subtract explicit costs only. So an accountant will tell you profits or revenue, and you subtract explicit costs. Now notice economic costs, I'm sorry, economic profits are different. With economic profits, you're going to have to do something extra. You're going to have to take revenue and remove economic costs. Now what are economic costs? That's your explicit and your implicit. So for an economist, economic profits are your revenue. You subtract the explicit and you also subtract the implicit. So an economist is going to subtract the implicit costs as well as the explicit. The accountant will only do the explicit cost. So in a nutshell, two types of costs, explicit and implicit. If you want accounting profits, just subtract the explicit costs from the total revenue. If you want the economic profits, you're going to have to take into consideration the opportunity cost of using self-owned resources. So you take that revenue, you subtract explicit costs, and you also subtract implicit costs. Okay? I hope this is helpful for the assignment as you progress. What I'm going to do next, I am going to take the time to go through a numerical example so that we can fine tune this concept a little bit more. You do take care. Hang in there. I hope the course is going well. And let me get this example ready. Get a piece of paper, get your calculator, get a pen, pencil, and let's do a numerical example together. Thank you. Hey there, I hope you got your pen and paper and your calculator. Let's try and do an example where we bring together the concepts that we've just gone through. We're going to look at a numerical example that focuses on the difference between economic and accounting profits. Let's go. Here's the scenario. Let's say you have a job where you are earning $22,000 per year and you decide to leave this job, quit the job, and open your own business. So you're walking away from the $22,000 per year salary to open your own business. To open this business, I am going to argue you took $20,000 from your savings that could have earned $1,000 interest. So you have some money in a savings account. You take it out because you're going to put it in the business and it could have earned $1,000 interest. Not only that, you have a store that you own. It belongs to you. You're going to use that in your business, but you could have received $5,000 rent for it. But you're going to use it for your own business. Now, all this extra time and effort, the late hours to get things going, all of this extra entrepreneurial energy that you put into your own business, we're going to argue that it is worth $5,000. But you're using it for yourself in your own business. Now, once the business opens, 
you get some help. You hire a clerk and you pay that clerk $18,000. By the way, all of these numbers are per year. We're going to make it easy, okay? You also have some utilities. These utilities that you have to pay are $5,000. The materials you use in the business, we're going to say that costs you $40,000. The very first year you open the business, remember you quit this job, you open the business, you earn $120,000. So whatever it is you decided to do, you're actually doing it pretty well. All the estimates are annual costs. We're going to make it easy. And this is the first full year of operations. But we want to figure out from this scenario, what are the accounting and economic profits? Let's start by digging out the explicit costs. What you have to pay an outsider. Look, you paid for materials. You paid a clerk's salary. You paid utilities. So all of these together are your explicit costs. The normal everyday costs of running the business, the explicit cost in this example, when you add those elements up is 63,000. Punch it in your calculator and make sure. Good. What about the implicit costs? The things you gave up, the things you walked away from. Well, you used own, your own store. That's foregone rent. You could have gotten 5000 for it. Now look at the savings account. What did you really give up? What did you walk away from? Well, even though you used the 20000 in your business, the only thing that you gave up is the $1,000 interest. So all we're going to capture from that is the foregone interest. What about that job? Those are foregone wages. And the blood, sweat, and tears you put into the business, all of that extra effort that's valued as entrepreneurial income, things that you're using for yourself in the business, that's valued. And that's also an implicit cost. Put them all together, the foregone rent, only the interest, the wages, and the extra entrepreneurial income. What do we get? Those are your implicit costs. Implicit costs. So, what are the accounting profits? Remember, that's total revenue and we remove only explicit costs. Punch that in your calculator. Accounting profits in this example is 57000 What about the economic profits? Well, remember, it's total revenue. We remove the explicit costs and we also remove the implicit costs. You do all of this, and what do you get? Economic profits in this example is 24000 So remember, you find explicit, you find implicit. The total revenue subtracting the explicit is the accounting profits. The total revenue, removing explicit, and removing implicit, those are economic profits. I hope this example is helpful.